well, in 2002, uh, I, I and uh, members of the Antique Telescope Society actually visited the uh, estate of uh, Lord Ross in Parsonstown, Ireland. And uh, so I'm going to, so while Steve is going to talk about the astronomy that uh, the third Earl did uh, tonight, I'm going to talk about the hardware that he used and show you pictures of what we saw. All right. And this is Ken Lum, a longtime member of FF SFAA and also a member of another other Bay Area clubs. Oh. Oh. A member of the Antique oh. Telescope Makers Society. Society and we don't uh, make antique telescopes. <laughs> 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 but, you know, but, but it's the Antique Telescope Society. So he has something to tell us, too. Okay, well, thank you very I want to thank uh, Linda and Steve for allowing me to insert this uh, portion of the uh, talk in because it's uh, highly relevant to what uh, Steve uh, just spoke, with, spoke about. In 2002, our group uh, and myself went to uh, Winterbur Castle uh, in uh, Ireland and uh, had a chance to took, take a look at the hardware that uh, uh, Lord Ross used to do the astronomy that uh, uh, Steve so excellently uh, described. So this is uh, uh, the actual Burr Castle. Uh, the family of Parsons actually has occupied this property since about 1620. Uh, they were migrants from uh, Great Britain, or England as it would be called at that time. And, uh, and uh, they uh, settled on land that was actually confiscated by the British Crown from an Irish clan known as the O'Carrolls. So uh, to the best of my knowledge, the O'Carrolls have not come back to claim the land, but, uh, the, but, uh, but uh, actually the uh, castle is still uh, occupied uh, uh, currently. So it's located, Parsons Town, uh, named after the uh, family, is located in the, basically the geographic center of the uh, uh, the Ar 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 of Ireland, and it's right there from Google Maps. And uh, this is uh, the entrance to the uh, compounds, now a, uh, a public museum, actually. And you can actually go to Ireland to visit it. And uh, it has uh, you know, hours and has a website and everything like that. And uh, the interior of this building is a, a museum to the uh, accomplishments of uh, Lord Ross and his uh, sons. <clears throat> when we got there, uh, oh yeah, here's an aerial view that I took uh, off a poster in the museum uh, showing the uh, <coughs> distribution of the uh, buildings in the compound. Uh, to the lower portion, you can see the Leviathan of uh, Parsonstown there. And in the background, uh, up to the upper right there, is uh, Burr Castle, the uh, residence of the estate. When we got there, uh, oh yeah, this is our uh, uh, tour group. You can see it's actually quite large from the uh, uh, ATS. <coughs> And uh, when we got there, we were greeted by this dapper, good-looking gentleman. He is, the, he is Brendan Parsons, the uh, seventh Earl of Ross, and the great-great-grandson of the third Earl. Uh, and he and his wife uh, live on the, on, uh, in, that, uh, in that big castle. So anyway, there's a portrait of Lord Ross, uh, some, similar to what you saw earlier. And uh, in the museum, uh, there's this uh, model demonstration of the grinding uh, machine that uh, Lord Ross used to uh, make his uh, mirrors. And some of the tools. What happened? Oh. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. There he goes. Okay. Uh, some of the tools that uh, were used uh, on the grinding machine by uh, uh, Lord Ross uh, to make his mirrors. And uh, here's a, it was a model, there was a nice model, working model actually of the 72 uh, inch uh, in the museum. I think this model was built actually in the Science Museum in London. Uh, and uh, here's another model of the three foot reflector which uh, Lord Ross built uh, just before building the, uh, the six foot. And uh, here are old photographs of the uh, three foot, uh, what happened to it. Uh, so the, the original mounting of the three foot is kind of a Herschel like mounting uh, off to the upper left. Uh, but the mirror was uh, later mounted on a more workable mount uh, that you see uh, to the, uh, in the lower portion of the picture. These photographs were taken by Mary Ross, the uh, wife of the third Earl, who got interested in photography in the 1850s. And some of the best documentation that we, that we have of the telescopes were photographs that she took uh, uh, of the uh, telescopes on the compound. So, of course, uh, we've seen some of the sketches that uh, Lord Ross has done, and these are some examples that were in the museum, along with the M51. And the original drawings actually are in the possession of the Ross family, and we saw some of them uh, uh, filed away in the castle, actually. Uh, let's see, so uh, the museum contains a number of the 
instruments that uh, Lord Ross and his uh, staff used. He actually had professional astronomers on his staff uh, so uh, <clears throat> that he actually paid uh, to work the telescopes uh, for him, actually. And uh, some of this, uh, like this is a, some kind of a micrometric uh, measuring device uh, that uh, was used on some of his telescopes and uh, just a beautiful example of uh, uh, what was uh, current uh, in the uh, mid, mid to late 19th century. All right. Uh, this is an interesting uh, device, the fourth Earl of Ross, I believe it's Lawrence uh, Parsons, uh, uh, used the, this uh, device to measure the uh, heat output of the moon, uh, which was his major contribution. Uh, it was an infrared, uh, sort of the first infrared telescope, essentially. And, uh, and uh, so uh, the telescope was restored and, this, and, and now on exhibit in the museum. Do you know what he used as a detector in that Actually, no. I'm sorry to say. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how this mechanism worked. Was it accurate at all? Uh, I haven't looked at that. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, but he did detect that uh, 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 heat, uh, infrared uh, radiation coming off of, uh, off of the moon. How much of it, I don't know, though, compared to modern values. Well, if you put a thermometer at the focal point. <laughs> Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, you, I mean, you know, I mean, one can imagine that the energy of the light uh, can heat up, uh, uh, you know, some detector material that uh, that that you may be using. But I don't know exactly how this uh, this uh, uh, device worked. I just knew that it was, uh, you know, he used it on display. Okay, uh, there are some here are some portraits of some of the uh, staff astronomers that uh, 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 Lord Ross uh, employed. Uh, uh, and actually, uh, some of these were employed by uh, his son, uh, the fourth Earl of Ross, uh, later on. And the last astronomer that was uh, actually the employee of the uh, Ross household was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, Dr. Otto v uh, uh, Bettiger, a uh, uh, German who uh, was there until uh, 1878. Uh, another, another uh, as uh, Steve alluded to, another staff person that uh, came along was uh, Gerald Dreyer. There's a portrait of him. He's the author of the New General Catalog, which was published in 1888, and that which we still use uh, uh, quite extensively today. These are some of the original lunar uh, service drawings that were on display at the museum, that were drawn by some of the staff astronomers. It's kind of interesting to uh, compare the kind of astronomy that they did in those days. Although there was a lot of measuring going on, uh, they didn't really quite know what they were measuring. And to some extent, to a lesser, to to a greater extent, it was kind of not that dissimilar to what amateur astronomers do now when they're sketching the uh, the, uh, the view of uh, the visual view of uh, objects that we look at. So this was the Leviathan of uh, Parsonstown as of 2002. It was restored. It was uh, neglected for over a century, and actually trees and bushes were growing inside the walls of the observatory. And in about 1997. An effort was uh, uh, under uh, when a, uh, 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 under was underway to restore the telescope, uh, mostly to working condition. Actually, of course, the original mirror that you saw a picture of is uh, in the Science Museum in London. And what they did was they ground and polished a, an aluminum mirror, a lightweight aluminum mirror, uh, to put at the bottom of the tube assembly. And to the left there, uh, there were three observing platforms. So the left is the lowest uh, observing platform which uh, allows uh, one, the observer to observe with this telescope uh, pointed up to about, up to 45 degrees. And then uh, to get higher up, you needed to get to, uh, go to the other platform, and I'll show you that. Okay, well, here's a couple of members of the uh, Antique Telescope Society, Bart Fried on the left, and Ken Wani. Uh, Bart Fried is from Brooklyn, and uh, Ken Wani from Boston uh, were having their uh, childlike uh, moments, you know, on the 72-inch. Okay. Here's the focuser of the telescope. Uh, it's actually kind of a double eyepiece focuser that uh, runs along a, uh, a, uh, a slide. And uh, that was how uh, the, uh, the telescope was focused. He used uh, one eyepiece of, uh, position for high magnification, I presume the bigger one, and then a smaller one for uh, lower magnification. Kind of interesting to die. And uh, the telescope uh, ran along this uh, track on the side of the uh, wall here. Uh, this is a picture to the lower right of the trunnion that the telescope was mounted on, the pivot. 
And uh, to the upper left, the fellow in the white shirt is uh, Michael uh, Tuberty, uh, who uh, uh, was the engineer in charge of the restoration of the 72-inch. And to the right is uh, Kevin Johnson, who is a conservator of astronomical instruments at the Science Museum in uh, London. And he, you know, for him, you know, coming from London to Ireland was an uh, easy uh, uh, hop, hop, sit, and jump. And here's a closer view of the, uh, of the pivot. It's a universal joint with a, uh, a horizontal elevation axis and a vertical uh, <coughs> right, to left, uh, right to left axis uh, in the middle. It's all made of iron. This is the original pivot, actually. And uh, the mirror box is just is mounted just behind it. And this is the windlass that was used to uh, pull the chain that lifted the uh, tube assembly up. The gentleman standing in the, uh, in the picture is uh, Rolf uh, Villach from uh, the Netherlands, who is an expert on uh, the origin of the telescope and has authored a book on that subject. So he travels with us. And the chain uh, is uh, led up to a pulley at the top of this uh, iron uh, frame and then led down to the uh, uh, front end of the tube assembly uh, on the front. What was the tube made of? Now, this is the uh, other two observing platforms, and that's uh, Peter Abrahams and, uh, from, the, from the group uh, standing up at the top. Uh, it actually has two platforms. Uh, there's uh, the platform that uh, Peter is uh, standing on, and then there's another platform to the lower uh, left, uh, which is a separate platform, and the two of them can be moved independently of each other on, uh, on uh, moving rails. And there's yours truly standing up on the platform. You can see how high up you, uh, one is. Wow. And here I am again with uh, Burr Castle in the background there. Wow. And this is the view down towards the tube assembly from the upper uh, uh, observing platform. Can you imagine being up here in the middle of the night and one wrong step and yeah. uh, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're out of luck. Okay, but fortunately, uh, best I can tell, Nobody's ever actually fallen off that platform. <laughs> Someone asked what the tube was made of. Oh, the tube is uh, made of wood, oh. okay, uh, with iron uh, hoops. It's kind of like a barrel, mm -hmm. all right. And uh, uh, when the tube, when the when the tube assembly was uh, restored, uh, the wood, but ninety percent of the wood was too rotten to use, and so they replaced most of the staves of the tube with uh, new wood, all right. But the wood was not thrown away, so it was put in storage. And I'll show you what, what they did with it. Okay, so you can see what the, it looked like the, you know, from the very top, you know, standing up over the... Uh, uh, it's a pretty kind of, kind of a, uh, a dizzying experience. For a but it, I think this picture really gives you a sense of what it was like to be the observer on this telescope. I mean, it was just, it was not exactly, it was almost an acrobatic uh, uh, you know, activity. Uh, to do uh, observing with this telescope at that time. <laughs> Another reason you might not see the spiral, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you just don't look down. That's all you do. You, I mean, you're, if you're an observer, you're supposed to look up. <laughs> okay. How do you get up there? Uh, well, I'll show you in the next picture. Uh, there are these ladders, wooden ladders, in the front of the walls, and you can climb up to the top of the wall uh, via these ladders. And also, there's another stairway uh, off uh, to the side of the, uh, of the wall uh, in the foreground there. And by that means, you can get up to the uh, uh, observing platforms. And you can see the observing platforms are supported on those uh, beams, on those wooden beams that slide back and forth across uh, or athwarts the, uh, the, uh, uh, the wall. And that's how, and that's how uh, the observer observed. And they moved the telescope uh, from side to side in the, in the azimuth direction uh, and uh, the walls gave you about, as I mentioned, about one hour of observing time with uh, any object that you acquire, if you can get it soon enough uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the most eastern side. And of course, the orientation of the uh, of the telescope space is uh, north and south. So it is kind of like a transit instrument, but not accurately transit. It's uh, really meant to uh, be used as a, a regular telescope. Actually, when I saw this picture, I sort of had this feeling that uh, it kind of looked like a piece of cake that was put down on the ground next to an anthill. <laughs> and, and pretty soon it's crawling with uh, amateur astronomers. Okay. Some of you may remember this gentleman. He's uh, uh, Carter Roberts uh, with the uh, East Bay Astronomical Society. 
And we're standing in front of the uh, entrance to the workshop uh, where they worked on the uh, uh, various aspects of the telescope. And uh, there is yours truly standing in the same place. And we saw this earlier. Uh, this is a picture of the same entrance uh, back about, um, I'd say about 1870 or something like that. Okay. The gentleman sitting in the front, uh, just, the, just in front of the mirror, is uh, Dr. Otto uh, Fettiger, who was the last astronomer to be employed by the Ross household, uh, working with this uh, uh, telescope. And of course, behind there is the mirror that is now on display at the Science Museum in London. And this is the mirror as it was displayed in the lobby of uh, the, uh, actually not the lobby, I think it's on the second floor of the Science Museum. Uh, now, I don't know if it's still there now. This was a picture that was taken in 2002, so they may be moving things around a little bit. Okay. But it still has a good deal of its uh, original reflectivity, even though it's uh, not been polished in probably over 100 years. And the gentleman who's in charge of that mirror is this fellow, uh, Kevin Johnson, uh, whom I uh, talked about earlier, standing up on the uh, observing platform. He comes to uh, tour with us on uh, many of our tours of other observatories as well. Just last, recent, most recently, last fall, we went to the Washburn Observatory and the Yerkes Observatory at the University of Wisconsin and in this, uh, Williams Bay. So this is the uh, back of the uh, castle. It's really quite an imposing structure built um, <coughs> Built around the uh, around the mid uh, 17th century, and uh, more of the castle in the back. Okay, so that's pretty much about what I have to show, and uh, I also brought a few interesting artifacts. Uh, one is that the an article on the rest restoration of the 72 inch was written up in uh, 1997 in Sky Telescope. It's called the Leviathan Reborn written by the late uh, Patrick Moore in this issue of S&T, so I invite you to come by and take a look at it. And the gentleman, uh, let's see, uh, Michael uh, Tuberty, who uh, was in charge of the restoration of the telescope, wrote this excellent pamphlet with lots of really nice old photographs and drawings from the telescope uh, down here. And this is uh, uh, one of the things that we get uh, as part of these tours is a souvenir uh, uh, of the tour. And uh, they took that old wood from uh, the old telescope and sliced it up and uh, made it into a little souvenir oh, and a frame. Great. So this oh. is a piece of the original telescope from the 1840s that was used to discover the spiral structure of uh, galaxies. So uh, wow. I actually stole two of these. <laughs> I, just couldn't, I just couldn't help it. And, well, there were some spare ones around. I just had to switch one. Okay, so, <laughs> so if you have one, come combine take a look at this, uh, you know, I know I'm not Catholic and I, I, I'm not into uh, dead bones, but uh, <laughs> I thought this was kind of cool. It is. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's the most fun, uh, you know, souvenir that we've ever received uh, for, uh, for any of our tours. Okay. And you have another one if that goes missing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, anybody takes me down on the parking lot, you know. <laughs> okay. So I want to thank you very much for the. I have actually for Linda. I have a whole. I'm developing a whole series of talks about different old observatories that we visited. And if you want uh, to uh, do like half an hour, maybe a whole hour of two different observatories, I'm happy to come by and that would be fun. do a repeat performance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, is it worth visiting Burr, Observ or Burr Castle Observatory Museum independently, or is this a special? Well, oh, this, this is open to the public, so it is a public museum. Okay. And you can actually visit parts of uh, Bird Castle itself. So even though it's still a private residence of, uh, of uh, uh, Brendan Parsons and his wife, uh, you know, there are areas that are open to the public that you can't tour the castle, that's correct. And the telescope uh, is uh, not used very often. Uh, they didn't anticipate for it to do so. Uh, but uh, it is operate, operate. Uh, and you, and we actually had a chance to look through the thing with the with the new uh, aluminum mirror. And actually, uh, it's pretty good. You know, the star images are actually quite good, quite pinpoint. Okay. But we didn't elevate the telescope. Right. But I'm sure, like you know, go through the
well, it's the Victorian Flagstaff. There's, you know, quite an interesting museum over in public. It's right. Something similar to Burr. Yeah, this is a similar situation at the, at the Burr Castle. That's correct. It's a, it is a facility. It's a cultural, uh, it's a cultural uh, artifact of Ireland. Okay. And they're proud of it. And they really want to put it on public display. And so if you go to uh, Ireland on any kind of trip, you can sort of make a, an independent uh, trip to uh, Parsons Town and take a look at the Parsons Town is actually quite a small sure. town. There's not a lot to see there, um, uh, other than uh, the Burcastle uh, estate. <laughs> now, I should mention that uh, Lord Ross did most of his astro uh, started most of his astronomical work uh, pretty much in the middle of the uh, the Irish potato famine. Uh, but he didn't ignore the people of Parsons Town. He employed a great many of them to do work. Uh, on the estate in order to basically keep them and their families from starving to death. And also he made uh, a lot of entreaties to, uh, uh, to uh, the government, uh, the British government in Westminster to uh, tell them that this is a real emergency, you need to do something about this. And so he's, uh, he, uh, so, he, so unlike the other land, uh, British landowners in Ireland at the time, um, uh, he, uh, uh, he actually came off uh, looking pretty good and in the midst of the Irish potato family, he, he did what he could, you know, for the people that uh, that were inhabiting his, his town. Yeah. What part of Ireland is where is it relative to some of the big cities? Well, uh, let's see. I can. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, let me. Uh, it's in the Irish public public, not in Northern Ireland. It's associated with. It. Yeah. Sort of the geographic center of Ireland, where the, the, the red tag is. Dublin is uh, off to the right, uh, near the boundary uh, with uh, with Northern Ireland, which you, you can see in a dark line up, up there. And to the north, the very far north of uh, the uh, 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 the uh, the island is uh, London. Right. So uh, this is uh, the overall. Uh, view of uh, its uh, Parsons Town location relative to other centers in Ireland. Okay, if you have any other questions, uh, come back and ask Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.